and welcome to the Constitution line by line. I'm Don Frazier, my Paul, friend. Paul Fabrizio. <laughs> yes, you are. Political science, history here. Getting a little punchy because we've been in Article 1 for an awful long time. It goes on and on well, and on. Congress is kind of a big deal, as it turns out. It, it is, and what we've got is the framers of the Constitution said, we're going to dump all the issues related to the U.S. government in this first legislative branch so Congress gets to deal with them, basically. Well, and it's because it's the closest to the people. Right. Or the states. And? In the case of the Senate, as originally intended. And? We'll just ignore him. <laughs> and the framers of the Constitution were all legislators. So they understood yeah, the they job under of the legislation. Yeah, they understood what the, sound, the the machinery sound yeah. was. And they wanted to set it up so that they got the power. Makes just perfect sense. All right, so Selfish is what they were. We are now... <laughs> Anyway. Such a disparaging remark over these brilliant I love men the who framers. built this thing. I love the ah, framers, I'm starting but to wonder, I have man. issues. I have issues. What a Californian. Um, <laughs> all right. So we are now in Section 10, Article 1, and we are now moved past all those other long parts. The end of Article 1 is in sight. That's right. So we're now in Section 10, and this entire section really has to do with what states can't do. Okay, and this is important. You think about it, and what Article One, Section 8 did is it enumerated powers. It granted powers. Here's to what the, Congress can, can do. do. And it's got to do the flip side of that. Here's what the states can't do. Correct. And you notice it hasn't yet said what the states can do. Correct. Okay. Again. I know where that comes in. It, yeah, it does. But, again, what w I, I have trouble with those people who keep talking about states' rights, states' rights, states' rights. When you read the Constitution, it's really all about the federal rights. Well, that makes sense. It unless makes sense. You, unless you throw in a Tenth Amendment. Yeah, but that's way down that the road. That is way down the road. So there was a lot of trust that had to be put forward with these people that were adopting this document. Yeah. They had they had to trust that everybody had the right the right interest at heart. Right. The national interest at heart. Yeah. All right. So now we're, or they made political deals. To or get they them made to political this. deals. You're so cynical. All right. <laughs> Article one, section ten, clause one. This particular clause has to do with treaties, bills of credit, bills of attainder, and obligation of contract. Okay. All right. So okay, I'm reading along too. While absolutely. You've got that's why we have those things. All right. Yeah. So no state, no state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation. What? Yep. You can't do it. South Carolina can't go it alone and ally themselves with France versus Great Britain. Or with Georgia? Or any other confederation. Ooh, okay, keep going maybe reading. Maybe secession was legal, the Confederacy was not. <laughs> That's all right. We'll unpack that in a second. All right, so no state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of mark, my favorite. Yes. Pirates. Pirates. And reprisal, letters of mark and reprisal, coin money. My favorite. Emit bills of credit. Make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts. Pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts or grant any title of nobility. Man, this is a dump truck of stuff that states can't do. And do you notice... We're familiar with every one of these. We are. We've heard of them all before. In Go back article, and review. Article 1, <laughs> Section 8, there they all are. Yeah, there they all are. And now we find out that the federal government can do it and the states cannot. In you other guys words, can't do it. If you didn't get the message with Article 1, Section 8, where it said this is what Congress can do, we're going to just hit you over the head with you states, you can't do this. Here's the message again. Yes. And just in case you're a little deaf. Yes. All right, so there's not a whole heck of a lot to say about this because we know what all these things are. Letters of mark and reprisal, my favorite. Mm -hmm. So you just can't go freelancing Florida. 
Right. Okay. Uh, I think it's interesting. You can't issue anything but gold and silver coin, a tender and payment of debts. So a state can't float paper and then say, hey, we've paid you <laughs> with this stack of gazuni money that we made. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. I'm glad that's in there because I just think there's some states that would try to pull a fast one like that. Um, and law impairing the obligation of contracts. That makes sense that, mm-hmm. you know, contracts are contracts right. and they're universally applied. Of course, we've already heard of bill of attainders, ex post facto, that sort of stuff. And states can't grant the title of nobility. So you can't be Prince of Texas, Don. I don't Dang. know if that was a goal of yours. What but... about the Dukes of Hazard County? <laughs> I've heard of them. I have too. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the, except wasn't that their last name instead? Well, it was. It was, it was their name. Very it wasn't subtle. a title. Well, okay. I guess but you anyway, get around that. Yeah. But Duke Daisy of Duke. Bayar and yeah, you just can't do it. You can't do it. Prince of Texas. Yeah. King of Texas. You can't be it. Okay. All right. Anything else to talk about on uh, this? I just want to go back. So no state shall enter in, into any treaty, alliance, or confederation. Well, I know you're going to come back to that. So does that mean, in fact, that the Confederacy of the South was unconstitutional? It was unconstitutional, but at that point, I don't think they cared. Right. Because they had their own government. Right. So they said, right, well, the Constitution no longer applies to us. to us because we have seceded from that. Right. So we have a new, new constitution that we're essentially signing off on. Right. That has a bunch of these clauses in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the old constitution, but different because this constitution mentions slavery explicitly and says it's legal. Does it? It does. Yeah. In fact, it makes it very tough to join the Confederacy as a new territory unless you slavery is legal. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, cornerstone very much cornerstone to the confederacy okay so there's something to the argument that the confederacy was about perpetuating slavery Slavery. yeah absolutely okay all right but message here received by the states this is what you can't do and there's a list of things and if you're going to try to do these things you're going to do it outside of the protections of the constitution and we may declare you in rebellion, That's which right. means we can call up the militia to suppress you. That's right. So now we understand 1861 makes it there pretty easy. There you go. Okay. Okay. So this is pretty easy. Pretty it's easy. a denial of power to the states. And there's going to be more denials. There you go. Coming up. All right. So that's our line, and we'll be back with the next line in the next episode. <laughs>